Welcome to your Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel. Until January 8th, we will be running this special look at the Kearsarge Regional High School's STEAM proposal. This proposal expands on educational concepts already in place at Kearsarge, but demands added and revised space use. It will provide an educational tool for almost a quarter of the students that will prepare them for work opportunities after high school. On today's show, we'll hear from teachers that are already using the program for a limited number of students and the administrators that propose the path forward so many more students can take advantage of, even those preparing for post-secondary education. When we come back, we'll hear from Cody Anderson and Jesse Fenn, two teachers that are already having great success with STEAM students. The annual meeting and deliberative session for the Kearsarge Regional School District will be held on Saturday, January 8, 2022 at 9 a.m in the Kearsarge Regional High School Auditorium located on North Road in North Sutton, New Hampshire. Inclement weather date is January 15. Voting will take place on Tuesday, March 8th in each of the district communities. The warrant articles are available on the district website. Please come and participate. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel. Today, we're looking closely at the STEAM proposal for Kearsarge Regional High School. Two teachers that are already using the technique will join us now. Tell us more, Cody and Jesse. We're here today to talk about the proposed addition on the high school, which will house and we'll call it the new STEAM wing. Uh, it's going to be what we'd like to call an innovation space that is going to allow us to offer more for the students here at the high school. So the proposed STEAM wing um, will provide us space and opportunities for students um, to engage with the curriculum in non-traditional ways, um, in ways that will help prepare students um, with the skills, not only academic skills, but also social skills, cooperation, problem solving, um, in order to really be prepared for the, the changing post high school landscape. So one other example would be uh looking at a school store for example where we could mix in hands-on learning where we can have students develop products make the products sell the products do math and accounting to see if we're making a profit see if we've covered our cost and eventually sell them to those in the school or help other clubs or sports teams with fundraising later on with the products that we're able to develop um, so I've really become involved in this project through my role as a curriculum leader in our STEAM department. Um, my day job here at the high school is as a science teacher, um, but my, my real passion is inspiring students to learn and apply their knowledge in creative ways. Um, so allowing a student to get credit for a science course, whether it's physics or chemistry um, or biology, something like that, by applying those same competencies, those same content, knowledge, and skills um, in some different way. So if the student can find a problem in the community um, or a problem that they are facing in their daily life um, and then demonstrate their knowledge of our science curriculum through solving that problem, then that student is able to demonstrate competency and therefore get credit um, for their demonstration of that skill. So one of the ways we're looking at doing this is, again, giving the students the opportunity to learn in the way they want to learn. Uh, an example would be whether you're taking AP classes so you can prepare for college, you're preparing for a trade school, a two-year program, a certificate, or even just going straight into work after high school. You can say, maybe I want to learn about the chemistry of baking. You could get partial science credit for doing a baking class and discovering what chemistry goes into baking. So our traditional educational model um, has done a good job of meeting the needs of what are a number of college-bound students. Um, we found that this traditional educational model fails to really equip those who may be maybe not headed for a four-year college or not enrolled in the uh, trade school down in Concord, but this group who haven't quite decided where their career path is headed. Um, 
but this facility would provide a space and an opportunity uh, for those students to develop what are really marketable skills um, and demonstrate their ability to apply them um, in ways that employers hopefully find attractive. The physical space would be positioned on the southeastern corner of the high school near where the shop is currently located. It would be an expansion of existing facilities and provide space not only for classroom um, but also for different kinds of programs including uh, potential culinary programs, engineering and robotics programs, um, technical um, education programs, um, and, and more. I mean, the, the opportunities only end where the student's ability to ask questions ends. So a project that could be undertaken here would be possibly converting a regular bicycle into an e-bicycle, looking at a self-propelled motor that is powered by batteries that is possibly solar charged. This is something we could look at in this space because we would be able to utilize cross-curriculum expertise, if you will. See, we would have multiple staff members, multiple teachers able to contribute to this in one space so it could organically come together rather than having to schedule things three different places three or four different times within a span of two weeks just to be able to get people together. This space would allow us to do that all in once all in one space. Um, the, the type of educational model that this space would, would enable um, would allow students in a very organic way um, to ask a question and seek an answer. Um, this inquiry-based education method allows the student to meet current curricular standards in a way that is meaningful and relevant to their personal experience um, and hopefully prepares them for a successful future beyond Kearsarge. Thanks guys. Boy, what a great way to prepare students for post high school work, but also bringing students that are looking towards post secondary education into a collaborative learning environment. With the explosion in the use of digital technology in today's businesses, it's important that our students be trained in its use. When we return, Barbara Turner, who oversees the digital technology for the Kearsarge Regional School District, will give us a snapshot of what is planned with the STEAM expansion. Please stay with us. The annual meeting and deliberative session for the Kearsarge Regional School District will be held on Saturday, January 8, 2022 at 9 a.m. in the Kearsarge Regional High School Auditorium located on North Road in North Sutton, New Hampshire. And Clement weather date is January 15. Voting will take place on Tuesday, March 8 in each of the district communities. The Warren articles are available on the district website. Please come and participate. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel. This week, we are focused exclusively on the STEAM proposal for Kearsarge Regional High School. Let's now hear from Barbara Turner, who oversees digital technology for the Kearsarge Regional School District, who will give us a snapshot of what is planned with the STEAM expansion. Hi, Barbara. Thank you, Abby. Joining me today is Chris Spooner, the technology and engineering teacher from Kearsarge Regional High School. Technology has certainly evolved in the last 20 years when classrooms either had no computers or they had one workstation to classrooms having a set of computers for students to work on. Now we have a laptop and a Chromebook for every teacher and student. Those devices along with the textbooks that students still continue to use, allow them to go online and find resources to help them better understand concepts and get a richer, deeper learning. In the 14 years I've taught here, I went from teaching CAD that was focused on making engineering drawings with dimensions on them and locating holes with um, numeric dimensions that might be sent off to a machine shop to be made that really wasn't a practical experience to CAD being used to make actual products using our 3D printers, laser cutters, and CNC routers. Uh, students can see exactly what their numbers mean and how they affect the actual products when the pieces come, they get the hands-on with the pieces they actually produce. 
So students graduating from high school and going into the workplace, they are expected to know how to use computers. It's a major function of any job that they may encounter, whether it be an electrician or a computer engineer. While we integrate technology into more and more of our classes, there is still a separation between the um, electronics technology and the practical technology education, like wood shop and um, manufacturing type skills. Those two things are getting closer and closer together and we have the tools to use them, but because of our space in the school, it's very hard for us to be able to take and have kids who are working in 3D modeling space come down to the wood shop and make those items using our CNC routers or the kids who are designing to build buildings come and use the CAD to design their building and figure out how it's going to go together in real space. Uh, the building addition will move those two departments right next to each other and allow kids to move back and forth in a modern manufacturing situation. This is really important for kids who are not going off to college because a lot of those manufacturing jobs will be taking and working with engineering and design uh, and implementing those skills and if they understand how both sides are done, they'll make both the college-bound engineers and the um, work-bound manufacturing students have a respect and understanding of what they'll have to do and what the other side is working on. We've worked over the past several years to upgrade our infrastructure to include faster internet so that students can take, care, take advantage of the online resources that are available to them. We have also made sure that science, graphic arts, and the robotics departments all have the technology that they need so that students can be creative and have the tools necessary to go into the workforce. What we're lacking is the space to do that in an efficient manner. The 20th century uh, education siloed each subject in its own individual domain. English was different from social studies, which was different from math, which was different from science, which was different from woodshop, which was different from music. Um, the 21st century is all is going to be about putting those things together. Your science and math are really together. Your uh, social studies is really English with uh, science applied to it and math applied to it. Your technology classes are your math and science applied and your English applied to making real things. Your English is how can you write about the stuff you've built. And our space is built for a 20th, a 20th century model where each department is very isolated. And the building expansion would bring a lot of those rooms right together where science could come down and work with the technology rooms. The math could have physical examples of stuff they've built using CAD and um, graphic design. When our students graduate high school and they go out into the workforce, they're gonna find that technology is an integral part to any job from automotive mechanics to modern manufacturing, companies like Hypertherm. By expanding this space, we are providing all of our students with the necessary skills that they'll need to go into the workforce and have successful careers. Thanks, Barbara. It is so important for all students to develop the skills necessary for utilizing digital technology, which is becoming a part of every trade and work situation. When we return, we'll hear more on the nuts and bolts of the proposal from Superintendent Fenneberg and Principal Langell. Please stay with us. The annual meeting and deliberative session for the Kearsarge Regional School District will be held on Saturday, January 8, 2022 at 9 a.m. in the Kearsarge Regional High School Auditorium located on North Road in North Sutton, New Hampshire. Inclement weather date is January 15. Voting will take place on Tuesday, March 8 in each of the district communities. The WARN articles are available on the district website. Please come and participate. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel. Today, we're looking at the steam wing proposal for the Kearsarge Regional High School. Two people that are instrumental in making it happen are the superintendent and high school principal. 
Tell us more, Winfried and Charles. Hello, so today we are here to provide the public with a little bit more information about the planned project at the high school, the STEAM, the Science, Technology, Engineering, Applied Arts and Math Expansion and Renovation um, at the high school. So a few weeks ago you have heard from two of our teachers about the educational innovations that uh, go along with this program. Today. Mr. Langeau, the principal, and myself would like to give you more information about uh, the physical space that we're trying to create, the size of the project, and also the rationale behind the project. So we have analyzed our uh, profile of the graduates in the Kearsarge Regional School District over the uh, past five, six, seven years, and have noticed that while 75% of our students then continue into a two or four year academic path or the college, uh, there are about a quarter of our uh, students that do not choose a post-secondary solution at this point. So addressing the specific needs of students that do not choose to go to college right after high school, we have been looking at solutions to provide more skills, more training, more preparation for this um, segment of our population. We're trying to add options for jobs in our communities, for career paths that kids might choose at this point without post-secondary education. So what we are not trying to do is replace the career technical school in Concord. Those programs are very valuable and approximately 20 to 30 students every year benefit from those uh, offerings. What we are trying to do is enhance and expand our offerings in the STEAM area uh, at our high school for those students. And um, Mr. Langell will talk about some of the specific programs uh, that we are targeting. Thank you, Winfred. So um, like Winfred was talking about, you know, this is really targeting those 25% of the kids. And the way I like to talk about STEAM which is such a jargon word that unless you're in education every day, you probably don't know what it means. It's the classes that we probably, as kids ourselves, love the most about school. Art classes, shop classes, culinary programs. And these things have come around now where we're starting to see in education, uh, you know, an intrinsic value to math, science, and connected to these um, areas by having students do these hands-on projects where they can be excited about school. Currently right now, um, 30 to 40 percent of the students that want to take these classes each year get a chance to do so because the space is so small. It doesn't fully meet the needs of the kids that want to take this, never mind if we grew the interest of students to take these classes. You know, for instance, we have one small art classroom that's about 850, 900 square feet. Sounds large, but we're trying to put three-dimensional art, two-dimensional art, jewelry making, ceramics, painting, printmaking, all these things into one small tight space along with the storage and the kiln that goes into that. And then if you go into our culinary class, currently we have one working stove and station for students to get around and cook. And to try and involve maybe the physics kids or physical science, some of these required classes that students go through graduation, to come down and partner into these classes and grow the size it would be next to impossible. I mean, as you can imagine, trying to cook in your own kitchen with 20 students with one stove, that would be impossible. But that doesn't work for day-to-day -day learning. In a wood shop class, you know, we are using the same tools that were used 50, 60 years ago when there are so many advancements in, in modern manufacturing, including robotics and CNC routers and these things that do a lot of the labor-intensive work of the construction industry, of the manufacturing industry, and we have some of those components, but it's really hard to use them because the space also has to have the traditional wood lathes and the band saw and the chop saw and, and all those other things that we have to have to also build the components that go with it. So this expansion would allow us to be able to use modern manufacturing with all of the old technology at the same time. Thanks guys, what a real world solution for bringing students with different interests together. 
When we return, Winfried and Charles will move beyond the concept and into the details of making these improvements to the high school happen. Please stay with us. The annual meeting and deliberative session for the Kearsarge Regional School District will be held on Saturday, January 8, 2022 at 9 a.m. in the Kearsarge Regional High School Auditorium located on North Road in North Sutton, New Hampshire. Inclement weather date is January 15. Voting will take place on Tuesday, March 8 in each of the district communities. The warrant articles are available on the district website. Please come and participate. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle, I'm your host Abby Peel. Today we are looking at the steam wing proposal and facility updates for the Kearsarge Regional High School. Two people that are instrumental in making it happen are the superintendent and high school principal. Tell us more about what needs to be done, Winfried and Charles. The areas that we're talking about um, for renovation are approximately 50 years old. They are original to the high school. So if you imagine spaces that even in your own house, um, we would probably have renovated the kitchen or the bathroom. Um, same applies for public buildings. So we need to create educational space that is adequate for the programs that we have developed and are planning to develop. As we look at uh, renovation and reconstruction, we are talking about 16,000 square feet of new construction, spaces that we now create in uh, recognition of what those new programs need to entail, and approximately 30,000 square feet all total um, in terms of being touched, remodeled, and renewed and refreshed at the high school. So that's about almost a third of the high school. In the process of planning, we also discovered that uh, several of our systems, our, uh, the roof, um, the HVAC need an update and, and those costs would be faced by the taxpayer in the next three, four, five years uh, under any circumstances. So the thinking was to, to fold these costs into a longer range bond um, together with the construction and renovation of learning spaces. So Winfred, you know, you bring up a great point, 50 years old. One of those areas that we're looking at too with, with this renovation uh, is the locker rooms and the PE storage and the PE commons area. Um, currently, those locker rooms look the same as they probably looked 50 years ago. Gang showers, tight spaces, corners uh, where it's hard to get by someone and then some awkward open spaces that can't really be used fully for team meetings. They have, you know, gender-based from 50 years ago style fixtures in them. Female locker room has some private wall spaces but the male locker room has none of that and there are no real storage spaces so often when you go into these locker rooms some of the PE equipment and the football equipment and soccer equipment are sitting on the floor or off in a corner uh, because it's the only place that they really can fit and it's, it's a great opportunity to be looking at that whole 1970s wing of, of the building where a lot of these things have been untouched for some time now. That's a good segue to uh, what people probably want to know about this project. How much does it cost? So at this point we're looking at a total cost which obviously needs to be bonded of 22 million, 22.2 million dollars. If you bear in mind what I said earlier, approximately five million dollars of that are maintenance issues, roof issues that need to be addressed either through budget in our regular budgets or we have the opportunity to bond this and, and fold this into a larger project over many more years. So at this point uh, we are planning to come to the voters in March with a proposal for a 20-year bond to renovate and reconstruct elements of the high school that also include updates to our HVAC system, our mechanical systems, as well as roof and other repair work that we discovered in the process of planning this expansion. Thank you, Winfred. It reminds me, we should invite you, know, you to 
have us come down in, into maybe you have a, a small book club or an organization or group that's local to town and you have a lot of questions. Sometimes it's a lot easier to come down and explain those. Uh, we are more than willing to, to come down and, and present this to you to answer questions. We've been going around to the seven towns to all the PTO meetings, uh, to select board meetings, Rotary. Uh, so if you have another club or organization that you represent and you're really curious to know about some of this jargon you're hearing like STEAM and inquiry-based education and what this really means for you, uh, we're more than happy to come down. You can also find more information on our website uh, as well as going through uh, YCN and, and watching these videos that, that we've been putting out through PSAs. Uh, and as always, call, email the high school at any time and ask to talk to me and I'm more than happy to welcome you in and give you a tour around and show you what we're looking at. So thanks very much for that offer and also I want to invite everybody and really urge everybody to come to the deliberative session on January 8th for the school district and really voice your concerns, ask your questions and hopefully support the project. Thank you very much. Thanks guys. I'd like to remind you that the Kearsarge Regional School District's deliberative session will be held at the high school on Saturday, January 8th. If you have questions or comments about the proposal, please come and be heard. Next week, we'll be coming to you from Ragged Mountain Ski Resort in Danbury. Don't miss our live basketball game of the week at YCNnow.com with replays on WYCX every Sunday and Monday at noon and 5 p.m. This coming week, we'll be at Kearsarge for girls game hosting Newport starting at 5.52 p.m. Our games are brought to you by HR Clough, LaValle's Building Supply, Barton Insurance, Bubba's Bar and Grill, Montcom Golf Club, and Echo Communication. I'm Abby Peel. Join us again next week for another edition of Yankee Chronicle. Stay safe, everyone.